Welcome to our cross-border conversation, Creating Animated Stories. Thank you to Genelec for supporting our cross-border conversations series of talks. And thank you to Brunel University London for technical delivery. Our brilliant speakers are drawn from the Screen Craftworks community and are from different countries at different stages of their careers, including first-time speakers. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Connor Cook, she, her pronouns. I'm a white woman with long, brownish, blondish hair with bangs, and I'm wearing a blue and red hand-knit shawl. I'm a composer. I work both in live action and animation, but I most love working in animation, so I'm very excited to chat with you all today. I would love to pass it next to Taja. Sure. So, hi, everyone. My name is Taja. I am a black woman with curly hair and I'm wearing a multicolored shirt, pronoun she, her. I'm a 2D animator from Jamaica and I love animation. I work in it. I mostly do uh, digital hand-drawn animation, but I also do cutout as well. I'm Munzir Nakwi. I'm a producer and a director based in Bombay, India. My name is Maria Shub. I'm from Ukraine and actually now in London. I'm a production designer artist, um, so my role in animation is how to draw and create the characters. Hello everybody, my name is Rodion Shup, I'm actually a brother of Maria. Uh, I'm animation director from Ukraine, now I'm displaced to Montreal, Canada. I'm working live here more than a year already. I'm a head and heart uh, of Ridney Animation Studio. It's my uh, company where I run since 2015. We teach kids how to do stop motion and create commercial content for different purposes like cinema, uh, commercials, music videos, uh, explainers, etc. How's about we jump into talking about why we do what we do, maybe our origin stories. I um, knew I wanted to be a composer from a young age. I saw the first Harry Potter film when I was nine, and I remember telling my parents, ah, I'm going to write music for movies one day, and they were like, okay, whatever. But then I kept saying it and saying it, and once you say something so many times, you kind of have to do it. So I have been studying music my whole life with my ultimate goal to be to work in experimental animation, composing music, or maybe an A24 film. I really like unique stories with sort of a lot of heart or unique stories that can help change the world. So I have big dreams to use my passion to make a good change in the world. It sounds like a huge thing, but I really do believe that if I believe in something that I can make a difference. Another thing that really impacted my story was I got to do the Sundance Film Music and Animation Lab in 2020 which was the first time I felt sort of accepted in the animation world. And it was a life-changing experience and I loved it. And I just sort of furthered my love of experimental animation. I've been animating for a few years now. Uh, I would say I was inspired since I was little by a lot of stories and I love to watch animations on TV, grew up with cartoons. And for a while before I realized it could be like a real job, I always wanted to know like how those things worked. I had a little um, Nintendo DS that had a little app on it that I draw with my finger. And then eventually it blossomed into wanting to do this for a career. And that's where I am now, you know, just trying to get there and network with, with people and work on different shows and stuff. So that's that was my big moment since I was little. I just loved cartoons and now I'm a big girl that loves cartoons. My first animation was done in 2006. It was a puppet doll animation. Um, I make all stage design and work with puppets and uh, director. It was stop motion, so we have had um, three parts of puppet. But in my my all life I work more in film industry like production designer but time and time I come back for animation because it's love and passion because <laughs> make animation you could express only 
with these different tools and you could choose tools for every story. So all my animation was done with different, different tools. This movie, what uh, Maria uh, mentioned, a play for three actors, it's a uh, uh, stop motion uh, movie back in, in times, 2006, you say, or five, yeah. or four, Six. like a lo <laughs> long time ago. So uh, I, as Maria is my sister and was a production designer there, she invited me to uh, at studio to see what's going on. And I saw this magic, uh, what is it, stop motion, fall in love with it completely and understand that there is no reason to do something else in this world, a part of it. So uh, uh, there I met in the uh, next room where I was in production movie of my future master and I, my teacher, I, I met him. And, and next year I just finished school and I get uh, enter into university of screen arts and uh, receive a master degree in uh, like a director of animation movies. And I start my company, Ridney Animation. Ukrainian Ridni means first one people family related so whatever I do it's important for me to feel like a family with my uh, clients with my colleagues with my illustrators with my animators with uh, everybody I'm really value a rela human relationship it's important for me it's my main value and I'm teach people I call it uh, I make people fall in love with animation so I like to introduce them to stop motion on festivals schools and also important value for me it's art so I'm most excited and most happy when I can combine education uh, art and uh, creating a professional commercial uh, content I, I'm born in Lucknow in North India and I moved to Bombay in 2006 then I worked for last uh, for the 10 years till 2016 uh, for different TV channels as a promo editor. Then 2017, I make a short film, The Stain, which was screened at New York Indian Film Festival, Indian Film Festival, Stuttgart, Germany, and few of the festivals in, in India. Then I make a feature film as a director and as a writer in 2020, actually, which was screened in Asian Film Festival, Barcelona. Dhaka International Film Festival and few festivals in India in 2021 and 22. And then I got a chance to produce a series, uh, animation series, Akul Nakul in 2022, which, uh, and we are going to produce a second season, I think the next year. And, and it's a 20 episode series, the uh, duration of the episode ranging from 15 minutes to 25 minutes. So in 2020, I make a feature film as a writer and director. And uh, then in 22, which, which uh, 22, we, the Akul Nakul, the series, it's about the two, uh, the, the Asurs are the demons in Sanskrit language. Uh, we, the two demons, the child demons, which came to, uh, came back to the earth and fought a bigger demon. So it's an animation series, it's very good for us. So that's, uh, and working on the second season and other projects also. How do we create rounded characters? and? enhancing emotion with our characters. I'm gonna use the story of the black girl in the ring. So if I'm telling a story about a woman who had to run away uh, from slavery and then meet up with a group of um, other people who used to be enslaved and band together to fight for their freedom, I think, okay, what does this feel like? Um, how would I approach this emotionally? And then I try to put myself in that character's headspace and then I animate that way. 
I had to learn the hard way who I belong to and whose family I am a part of. These are my people. This is my story. And I am the black girl in the ring. Now we unite and we fight. So this was done as an introduction to a movie about Nanny of the Maroons. And she is a national hero in Jamaica because during uh, the period of slavery in Jamaica as a colony, she helped the enslaved people to move off of the plantations into the hills. And she fought back against the uh, colonists that were trying to um, get them back into bondage and slavery. So that's so it tells her story, and so there's it's, also uh, excuse me, it's like a future movie filmed with actors, or it's like a documentary. It's a feature movie with actors, but it's based off of a true story. Yeah. So the the rest of the film is in live action, but when I was speaking with the director, he specifically wanted an animated intro because he wanted it to feel immersive, like a story. So that's also why the drawings don't move a whole lot. I wanted it to feel like it's a moving picture. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to encapsulate that and to also make it feel like you could see it still in a storybook, but also you could see it moving on screen. And when I was looking at it, and this kind of delves into the idea of the character, when you think of Nanny of the Maroons, because she would have been living in the hills of Jamaica, um, on their own like off-grid village usually her depictions she is wiry um she has her hair tied up in a similar african style and because that image of her is so iconic i wanted to put that back she's supposed to be very strong she's not someone who would um cry she is not somebody who shows emotions outwardly like that so a lot of her expressions that i have animated would be fairly stoic and that's something that I had to think about as well when I was crafting that in, because knowing what you want to say and then um, adjusting the writing and then the animating on top of that to make sure that the vision is cohesive is extremely important. And because as well, the maroon people would have been enslaved and wearing clothes that aren't native to them, I put them in a kind of mishmash of um. I'd say like 1500s to 1600s clothing as well. And oh. yeah, so there was a lot of research that went into it too. And because of that research and the idea of making it um, like a moving picture as opposed to like a fully fluid animation, I wanted to make sure that we got all those cultures in with the colors as well as the uh, animation movements that I put in there. But yeah. it's based off of... Um, an image that we have because her story was mostly told orally through the traditions of the maroon people which still exists to this day in jamaica and they're still living in the hills so the the story was told mostly orally and then through that we got an artist's rendition of what she might have looked like so i based it off of that but also mixed in with the actress as well in the live action version because i also got the pleasure of watching uh, some of the film and her acting and I got to mix in that personality as well to my design of her. So that was really important to me to mix in both the live action as well as the iconic image that we have of her as well. Oh, it's very interesting that you're talking about research. We really need so many researching before because our films always shorter than the future films, but we need to make the same big progress process to make previous mood board research everything color traditions history images and the question how we draw the characters it's really because of research and the big big previous work that we have done before and i could understand that you need to make combine the specific history fairy tale oral story um real researching uh, about historical costumes and and how it will be suitable to real film for another mm -hmm. work for directoring so it's it's complicated i'm really respecting yeah, you. yeah. Thank I, you. I just 
I, I just want to add something that uh, one of the race film, the chess plays, the Shatranj Khiladi, 1978, has a small one minute animation sequence in 1978 in, in India about, uh, yeah, and this is only Satyajit Ray's non Bengali film. So I think it will be very difficult to put animation in a live action feature film at that time. Now I think it's it's much easier to uh, ab 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 for the directors to use the animation in 1970s. It's very difficult, and it's not a uh, it's it's off thing that you have to put animation in a feature film at that time. So and and if you see the films of Abbas Paristami, the Iranian filmmaker. You, you, most of most of his uh, images look like a painting, and it it will be part of the animation. I think he he does not use the animation is in his films, but it's it's look like a painting, and an animator is like a digital painter, if you have to say that. Well, from a composer's standpoint, the first thing I talk about usually with the director is the emotional arc of the story. I mostly work in film so i do a lot of feature and short film and it's different you know a short film the narrative arc is much shorter but then feature film there might be one grand narrative arc and there might be smaller ones too so i literally draw a graph of what the story arc is and the plot points and then under that i have all my i'm not even very organized so this is big for me to be able to do this i i write where all the big emotional points are so i guess that's my own way of animation however i cannot draw and it doesn't look good but it serves the purpose so i know what the film on a grand scale is going to be because probably for animators too like there's a lot of minutia you deal with in composing where it's like sometimes you're scoring 20 seconds and it might be action or whatever and it might be a really packed 20 seconds but on the whole you want your whole film score to be cohesive and to bring a whole rounded sound you don't want it to be like random things throughout the whole film you want to have a whole overarching tone or collection of instruments or whatever the through line may be Your arms are so skinny. I haven't been hungry. Dad, you gotta eat. <laughs> Hello. It's your neighbor. And I have the doctor with me. So beautiful, huh? Yeah. Thanks. I love this animator. She was actually my Sundance animation partner. And when we watched through the film, this is actually a great segue because I have a question for all of you. Um, when we watched through the film the first time together, the scene that struck me was the shot of the chest and it's like bony and sunken. So even if you only saw that frame, you'd be like, oh, that guy's sick. Mm -hmm. The other thing that struck me was the sound design, the rattly breath. So when I started composing, the first thing I wanted to do was to highlight the idea that like the breathing is really important. It's like its own character almost. And so with the music, I thought I could make like a sighing vocal thing that would feel really like breathing and it would feel a little bit like desperate. Um, the movie is about obviously a kid who's un trying to understand his dad is sick and dealing with the emotions. And so most of the movie is pretty sad. But then the play scene, um, the director and I went back and forth a lot about how do we score this. My gut instinct was to score it like the kid's perspective, like kids playing, kind of joyful. 
and the kid is like pounding the ball. So the music is from the child's perspective. Your daddy needs his rest. You go play with those kids downstairs. What I like about that clip is you kind of are with the child for the first time throughout the rest of the movie. You're kind of watching everybody, but in that scene, I feel like you're really with the child and he's a little mischievous. And the whole movie is incredibly heavy. Um, so I like that that provides a breath. And also the animation style was really inspiring to me. She actually took like film paper, like what you would take a photograph on, and she scratched it and then painted it. So it was like very tedious. I don't know how she did it. And uh, she's a, an amazing artist. And actually she's doing some art for my next project that I'm releasing because I just was so enthralled by her work. I'm enthralled by all of your work, by the way. I'm curious how y'all, how you all, when you're starting with um, your collaborators, how do you get started on talking about character? Uh, it's easy to answer because I, in animation, what uh, we will see soon, I was a script writer, um, um, artist who draw characters and uh, making mood boards. So I co well, collaborate just with myself and with we have a great team with my beautiful brother. <laughs> it was easy. And I bring some sketches to show how it was oh cool so it's cut out guys it was cut out guys yes you see so i draw everything separate in a uh, watercolor papers and then wow. and then rodion just cut out it in after effect so it was combination between between real texture of watercolor paper because uh, AKQA, my agency who asked me to do this animation, really enjoy, um, like, they was happy with uh, old school tabletop watercolor animation. Could you do this? But we had just three weeks. So we combine, combine um, uh, our tools. So I make it flat. I make it uh, in watercolor paper, leave all this not super accurate lines because of like short handcraft it was style. like and handcraft so sometimes the task give us uh tools because the main task was how to make really handy craft animation and i decide to do it not round do it flat do it just just uh like simple but not simple you understand that it's <laughs> quite difficult to do so um and all characters was drawing separately and i have the pleasure spent oh, wow. a lot of hours in photoshop to cut out all of it yes <laughs> and Rajon cut out every little little line so oh, it wow. was how it was done
Yeah, I agree. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Very beautiful. Amazing detail. And 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 which softwares are used by both of you for that the animation? Which software are you? So M Maria use uh, such soft as her hard hands. Okay. <laughs> what what you sh show? I uh, prepare all images in uh, uh, Photoshop, and my main tool is After Effects. So I, okay. I assemble and animate all in uh, uh, After Effects with some like fake three D. Okay. So I draw every slice separately. Okay. Size like heels and after wow. i assemble like a 3d village from all these pieces like okay you see it's a okay. portrait and separate eyes separate for blinking different blinking mouse for, speak, for every so. image and funny story when we start and we understand that we have just three weeks to do this and i sit at home and say oh my god how I need to start it because I need to make, you know, animatic storyboard to understand how many images I need, how many slices, how many characters. And my youngest daughter, she was 12 in that morning. She said, oh, is it payment work? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Could I help you and you will pay me? And I say, okay. And she, what the problem is it? I say, I need storyboard. She say, okay. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. Oh, that's nice. I'm really cute. Bring me storyboard. Maria, you know that in uh, England, in the UK, uh, children labor is illegal, actually. Maybe uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's our family team. <laughs> okay. So she, she got money, <laughs> at least. So, and it was my inspiration how to start. And I just start, draw, draw, draw every day. So it was like, Two days of drawing, days. Uh, day, one day I scan, I scan everything uh, in a very big. Um, I don't know how biggest quality that we we could imagine, and uh, then I send it to Radion. He immediately start to cut out all characters and big big thanks to our agency that they understand that animation it's very very short time to prepare it so we just make it super quickly they said yes for every sketch and we start immediately cut out and uh, prepare for 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 next steps animation also on the halfway we find another tool maria made some extra stuff uh, in uh, ipad in procreate tools include some like animation of uh, shining star like few frames you know like and draw with animation so when i assemble everything and uh, give a picture to maria she was not satisfied because she's a perfectionist and she liked to do best stuff and not just in time so we find a new tool uh, i i gave her back like psd with all layers already assembled uh, and uh, sometimes she made some extra like shadow some reduction shadow. or some overdrawing in ipad to make all it uh, like better and more uh paint. like like fine art painting it was right. like Yes. Mer mer merch better all layers visually so she adds some shadows or uh, repair something or add some highlights uh, all over her uh, hand or make to... some lines of uh, hero uh, softer or re really correct them so because when you work in uh, such stuff like uh, completely hand making, uh, you if you not enough experience, you kind of blind because you draw all like eye here, hand here, leg here, and you not always know how it will be when I will merge it in one character. And when you <laughs> ask uh, how we find the characters, uh, it was a little tribute for our well known artist Maria Primachenka and we were with Radion today our clothes with her oh, images okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so so because the story was about Ukraine about how we celebrate Christmas and how to explain that well-known uh, music 
Carol of the Bells. It's specially written by Ukrainian composer Leontovich 100 years ago. And we um, really want to make this uh, tribute to combine all really important artists and music and um, colors that could express our feeling about our uh, country. Most of my work is centered around children and their stories. So I mostly make child-friendly animations or you say like family-friendly animation. And that's just mostly about me wanting to like bring joy because I know sometimes things can get pretty heavy um, but I do enjoy bringing joy with my work and I like making things that are cute and bubbly and friendly. So I really do love character animation. I love seeing things that pop up on screen. I love things that are very lively and warm and that tell stories between two characters. Like this, for example, that's a Jamaican fruit called a sweet sop. And this is just a story about sharing and just giving whenever you see someone in need. Uh, and I also like to be stylistically diverse with my work as well, because I really do enjoy seeing that and having that kind of range, but also being able to fit it into different types of productions, because I love working with different stories and different people from all over the world. And I feel like the best way to do that is to just be pretty flexible with the style that you're able to work in. Kasia, could you tell a little bit about your technical pipeline? So how you uh, do it? It looks all very different in style, but it's in te technically it's a similar. So how you work? Sure. So I primarily work digitally, but I do love integrating textures. So the first thing I would do, of course, is write out a script. Um, and once everything is scripted out, I'll do my storyboarding online. I usually do it in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, so I will board out everything and then move into the digital inking and color. I use Clip Studio Paint primarily, but I also use Photoshop as well. And I'm recently getting back into using Toon Boom Harmony to bring everything together too. I also do my uh, compositing in Premiere Pro and sometimes in After Effects, depending on what I want to do or the look that I'm going for. Uh, I have worked on, I think, things that I haven't worked on anything exceeding four minutes. Uh, four minutes is the longest that I've ever animated anything for. And that was for my student film. And for that, I had to be the writer. I had to do the animating myself. And I also had to uh, be my own sound designer. But Thankfully, I had gotten music commissioned and I had gotten some friends to do the voice acting for me. It's the first time I'd ever worked with uh, music composed specifically for me, as well as voice acting for me. And what I had done is I let them read the script. I gave them their character descriptions and I showed them the storyboards and then they acted it out. And from that, I was able to kind of tweak my animation a little bit to represent like how they would sound when they're saying something or how it would fit in with the music. So it's always okay. about a network. Yeah, I, I it is. I wanted to tell uh, you, you, you tell that you made never made uh, more than four minutes, and I would uh, make a remark. I think everybody can agree with me. Know this, uh, how people say that uh, there is a human years and there is a, like a dog years, like one dog or cat years is like a seven uh, human uh, years. I think there is the same in animation. So one minute of animation is like a <laughs> seven oh, <yeah>. minute <laughs> of feature film or something. <laughs> like that because we definitely take a long time to do short stuff so it's i i always uh, call a 10 minute uh, animated movie a future film already <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point well speaking of music with animation manzir don't you have a clip that is yeah, a song with animation yeah, yeah that's a music video of our series <laughs>
अपना मंत्र अंदर बाहर बाहर अंदर अपनी Wow, it's so thank you, pro- thank you so, so professional. Yeah, thank you so much. It it will take a year your to complete FX animation. I adore your FX animation. Yeah. FX it will take an year to complete everything. And uh, the song is written by Samir, one of the biggest lyricists in Bollywood, the Indian film industry, in, based in Bombay. The lyrics oh. lyrics is written by that. Yeah, him. So, which came first, the song or the animation? Ah, uh, no, we we make the animation animation. tentatively and then we put the song then we have to edit it according to that so because we have some of the shots of the other thing but for the this kind of music video because the channel needed it so we have to make some additional uh, animation and we we use lot of instrument we that that music director uh, used lot of musical instrument because in india there's a lot of cu- different cultures here so there's a lot of different type of music there's not a s- similar type of music in india and you produced this program as well yeah yeah i'm the producer or nothing else i'm just a producer one of my partner bavin we are the producer for kobare tv kobare miss balloon there's a, a animation cha- kids animation channel in india named kobare tv we produce that for how many animator make um this? Uh, yeah a uh, lot of because i am just a producer i did not know about the uh, dad did i'm really sorry i did not know about the dad details but we make animation in hyderabad so there's a team there there's a team in bombay a small team in bombay and there's a team in bigger team in calcutta so we just put that everything and we edited everything in bombay and the music is happening in india but i think it's it's more than 20 animators because there's a lot of work because we need a, a and for a bigger a bigger if for a larger budget everything we need more animators yeah. because there's a lot of studios in and there's a, a very very thriving animation uh, culture in india it's not expect uh, it's not uh, it's it's not uh, it's very professional actually but uh, because there's a lot of kids channel in india so that's why the animation channel the kids animation channel and what time, what timing of yeah. your syria timing the, uh, of it's, 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 it's it's 20 episodes the first one is 25 minutes and it's range from 15 oh, minutes oh. to 25 minutes yes it's 20 episodes uh, some are some is 14 work. some is 14 some is 6 17 depend on the but the first one and the last one is i think 25 minutes 24 25 minutes so how many people uh, in total is under your control and decisions I I think uh, overall uh, not not given time I think more than eighty, some uh, the voiceover artists the uh, all the things but the animators is not more than twenty but a lot of people the editors the cab the the lyricists the musicians the, everything is around eighty not a given time but overall is eighty. It's crazy. A- a- I think India, it's hard. It's yeah, hard India, to manage even eight or ten people, but to no, manage eighty. In, in India, India the in, in India the labor is very cheap. so we have lot of people in every film set 100 is normal for a feature film in india yeah. mm. how do you all deal with burnout and frustration when your art doesn't come the way it looks in your head on paper or on digital or anything it seems to me it's teamwork and we could help each other it's not one person inside the project so we could inspire each other and um inspiration just just come Yeah, I agree. Like working in a team really helps um with burnout cuz you can like bounce ideas off of other people and it helps relieve you creatively, but I would also say to you sometimes if you're really tired, it's a good idea to take a break. You know, if you really need a break, it's good to relax your mind and go outside and cuz life is very inspiring and it can really make you feel less overwhelmed when you're able to get into a different environment. and you're able to look around and see what's going on outside or in the world around you and also to watching um other films or other movies or other people's work can also be really inspiring and can help you overcome um your burnout as well but i think if it really is that you're very tired resting is super important 
I think what uh, really can uh, help is a good choice of a project because if it's by itself inspire uh, you, it uh, help you to not burn out much longer than if you work on a project what you hate, do not like colleagues and stuff like that. What advice would you give to freshly graduated animators trying to make it in the industry? What do you all think? I would say sometimes it can depend on where you are. So right now I'm in Jamaica. I'm a little bit away from, I would say, the major hubs. Um, one of the best advice uh, I would give is to really talk to people in the industries that you want to work in. Um, and a lot of people are very friendly, so ask for advice. Um, talk to the people around you as well, because wherever you are in the world, um, there might be somebody else who's doing the same thing you are, might be a little ahead of you, or might be in the exact same place. And it's a good idea to talk to them and to get ideas and to just create. Um, and also to really iron out your portfolio as well that for the jobs that you want and to send them out and check out the places too that you're interested in working for as well and see what their work looks like and see if you might be a good fit. Also, LinkedIn is really great to talk to recruiters or to see other people who are in your industry as well. And you can send them a message and be polite and ask them questions about their work and how they made it into the industry if they're in a specific job that you might want to get into. How do you navigate pitfalls during production? I would say every production has its ups and downs, honestly, um, especially, you know, here in Jamaica, sometimes things can move a little quickly and on a tight budget. So it depends on what the pitfall is. Sometimes it can be um, on the client side, meaning, for example, they want like a five minute intense fight scene with different camera angles but they're only giving you one month uh usually it's a good idea to sit them down and you know try to get a more realistic approach to what they can actually do with the budget and the right time frame uh so sometimes it's on that side sometimes it can be where you might not be able to find the right artist for the style that you want um and a lot of times that just has to do with kind of doing open calls. So going online and just saying, hey, um, I'm doing a project about XYZ and I'm looking for artists. Uh, a lot of times, especially if it's paid, you'll get a huge number of people just sending in uh, their work. Uh, but sometimes it can be within the team as well, where maybe sometimes uh, not everybody is on the same page. It really helps at that point to have like a producer or a director. Uh, who has a solid vision because a lot of times a solid vision can really like help hammer out a lot of the nitty-gritty details that are giving you problems so having a very solid vision as well helps with the pitfalls so that you can say okay I wanted this to be like a watercolor romance but right now it's looking more like a uh, acrylic paint uh, action what what can we do to shift it back into perspective or how can we make the style align with our vision. So that's how I would, or usually how I navigate those pitfalls. Thank you. And thank you everyone for being here. This was so fun. Thank and you so much, you. everyone. Thank you for organizing such a beautiful conversation yes. with the colleagues. It's so nice. It's just been an extraordinary talk and I've just found it absolutely fascinating. So thank you to everyone, um, particularly the speakers for coming, but thank you very much.